Welcome to the second lecture for machine learning that is well posed learning problems. So the content for the lecture 2 is divided into the following points. The first is the well posed learning problem, examples of learning problems, checkers learning problem, handwriting recognition learning problem, robot learning driving learning problem and designing a learning system. So first of all, we'll be starting with the definition of what well-posed learning problems are. So the first definition is given by Michel in 1997. The definition says, a computer program is search to learn from experience E with respect to some class of task P and performance measure P. If its performance at task in T as measured by P improves with the experience, so if we see this definition, we basically have the following terms, experience, task, and the performance measure, P. And what we, what we understand by the definition is, when we are performing the task, T, which is measured by the performance measure, P, and which learns from the experience, E, the performance of the task should increase, or it should, it should increase as measured, or it should improve with the experience E. So the main focus is on the performance of the task T. It must identify the following three features. The first is the class of task, the measure of performance to be improved and the source of experience. The class of task means the task which has to be performed. The measure of performance means the performance should increase or we should learn by the experiences and we should learn in such a way that the performance get, is getting improved. And last is the, is the source of experience. How we are gaining, gaining the experience in that particular task. The second definition is given by Hadmar in 1902, in which he says that a problem is well posed if a solution to it exists and if that solution is unique and if that solution depends on the data experience but it is not sensitive to the small changes in the data or experience. So this well-posed learning problem or phenomena should have the following properties. So we can see from the definition also that the solution should exist. Next, the sh a solution should be unique and the last the solution behavior changes continu continuously with the initial condition, but it should not it should not affect the experience or the performance. So these are two definitions for the well posed learning problems. So uh, we can see from both the definitions that the experience or the performance measure should improve the experience that we are gaining should be able to increase the performance of the task T. So some of the examples for the well-posed learning problems are a checker learning problem, handwriting recognition learning problem, robot driving learning problem, and spam mail detection learning problem. So we'll be discussing these problems one by one on the basis of the task, experience, and the performance. So if we take the problem of the checkers learning problem, we know the in this game, two one person is two one person is playing the game and the other is the opponent. So we play the game in such a way that we have to move the boards across the blocks which are given in the board. So the person will win in such a case that the opponent has no choice to move or is stuck in such a position where he cannot move the boards. So. If we divide the problem into three categories, task, performance, and training experience, so the task T is what? It is the playing checkers or the person is playing the game checker. That is the task given to the person. Second is the performance measure P. How will we be measuring the performance of that task T? That will be depending on the percent of games which are won against the opponent. How many games that person has won? And the last is the training experience E. So how we gain, gain the expertise in that particular task is by 
practicing the game again itself so this is a small problem in which the task performance and training is being described by the following points second we have the handwriting recognition learning problem so we have the following three things the task performance and training experience so we will be starting with a small example when we are this uh, when we are copying something or when we are copying an assignment from our friends assignment book what we find is the first day when we uh, copy the assignment it's very difficult to understand the writing the handwriting is not good the second time when we copy the assignment from the same person we are able to understand the handwriting and the next third time if again we are copying the another assignment the handwriting is very visible or we are able to recognize what the person has written so this is a small example that will help you to relate the handwriting recognition learning problem so in this problem if the, the task t is recognizing and classifying the handwritten words within the images what we get is we get a image and then we analyze what the word is written in from that image second is the performance measure performance measure measure is classified by percent of the words that are classified properly or correctly and the third is the training experience e training experience is basically the database of handwritten words with given classification which already we have learned for example if a person has written a we know what a stands for or what if we get a image of a alphabet will be able to understand this is the alphabet a so this is the training experience which we have gained from the database of handwritten words so this is the task performance and training experience for the handwritten handwriting recognition learning problem next we have the robot driving learning problem so in case of a robot driving learning problem we have the task t performance and the training experience e so the task given is driving on a public four lane highway using the vision sensors so here we are using the vision sensors that a robot will be using so the performance measure p will be the average distance travel before an error the distance what the person has or what the robot has travel will be helpful for determining the performance measure last we have the training experience e the training experience is basically the sequence of images or the commands which are being recorded when a human being was driving the same car so these are the training experiences that will be fed to this learning problem so a robot learning problem basically is divided into the following three things that we have already discussed next we have the spam mail detection learning problem as we have already seen or have analyzed in our gmail account or any email account that we get to know if a, if the email is in a spam or is in the trash folder so the detection for learn so the learning problem for spam mail detection is also categorized in this into the following three categories so the first task or task t is to recognize and classify mails into the spam or not spam so this is a task which is given to the learning problem the performance measure p it will be calculated by total number of mails which are being correctly classified as spam or not spam in the program so that will be helping to check whether this learning problem is feasible or not last we have the training experience e training experience e is basically the set of mails with given label spam or not spam this is the training data that will be provided to the learning problem that is divided into two labels spam and spam and not spam so these are the some of the problems which are for the well posed learning problems next we have designing a learning system or we can say how we design a learn learning system so first of all we talk of a learning system we divide the learning system into the four categories first of all we have the training set or the input that has to be fed to the system or the machine which will be using for the evaluation of a learning system next we have the target function 
target function and next we get a learning algorithm that will be helpful for improving the experience and last we have the evaluation process so we'll be discussing all this one by one so if we talk about choosing the target function it deals with the exact type of knowledge that has to be learned what function we have targeted and what knowledge is required for that function to be achieved second we have choosing a representation for the target function the knowledge which we have gained how it can be helpful for interpreting the function or have the best moves that will be helpful for evaluating the target that we have set last we have the choose happy last point is choosing an approximate algorithm for the target function it basically consists of a learning mechanism or a learning algorithm to improve from the experience so these are the three steps which we will be discussing in the further lectures also the last is the evaluation process procedure that is basically to evaluate the improvement or to check whether the learning system has improved from the experiences or not so these are some of the steps that you, that are used for designing a learning system so this is all for today's lecture thank you